pressed for time, so I'm going to talk and paint at the same time. Um, but uh, yeah, I've, I've been painting since. Uh, I, I, I've never really never been good at anything else, so I didn't have a choice. It was it was either art or outside with a cup in the middle of the street. You don't have to look at me. What? I'm beautiful, but you can. Oh look right, there. right. So I, you I tell feel like you looking at me is holding you back. Uh, well, you're the one talking. I'm not used to like. If someone's talking to me, I look at them. You do you. It's all good. <laughs> what are you going to be painting for us today? I am going to be painting a quick sketch of Beast from Beauty and the Beast. Any Beauty and the Beast fans out there? There's a whole group of them coming down the stairs. I love it. That's awesome. So you are a licensed Disney fine artist. Yes. What does that mean? Um, that means I can paint uh, pictures of Disney characters without getting sued. Something that has happened to many of us, I know. <laughs> uh, what, well, what that means is uh, a lot of people say to me, do you, work, do you work for Disney? And the answer to that is actually no, it's a licensing agreement. And so I paint this stuff with permission, but I don't have to go in and punch a clock or, or uh, any of that. Uh, I ha I've had a couple of real jobs. Uh, not for very long. Yeah. And so is your stuff featured? I know Disney has some galleries at uh, some of their parks and in like the downtown Disney areas. Do you have yeah, uh, um, all of those depending on whether or not the gallery decides to stock it. And so yeah, I should be in most of those galleries. But I mean, I, you never know where you're going to be. But yeah, we know Art of Disney, uh, at Disney Springs, uh, this one at Epcot. Um, a few more. Yeah. Uh, Barker Animation Art Gallery in, in uh, Florida represents me. So I can be reached. Right. So how did you get started in painting? How did I get started with painting? Um, actually, it was a bit of a, um, an accident. Uh, I had just wanted to be an illustrator. I wanted just a job where um, I went into the office every day and um, just sketch Disney characters. I wanted to work for consumer products or um, character design or some, some, some job where I had wore a shirt and tie. And um, I, I passed all the tests and uh, they flew me out to uh, California for an interview. And uh, it just didn't happen. Uh, I don't know why, but they said, we'll call you Friday. And I'm, that was about 15 years ago. And they, I'm still waiting for the call. And um, a friend of mine said, you know, while you're not getting into feature animation, why don't you turn, teach yourself how to paint? And so I, uh, I taught myself how to paint. And about five years ago, I was in about oh, a dozen fine art galleries across the country. And um, I just thought if, um, if I'm painting still lifes and portraits, maybe I'll do a couple of Disney themed paintings and see what happens. And uh, I did them, and um, a friend of mine saw them and said, why don't you send them into Disney Fine Art? And I did, and, and now here I am. So uh, I think hard work and persistence is what they prefer you. Um, that's, that's the story that I've been, I've been told to tell you. There's actually a real story that I, I can't say over a microphone, but if you catch me, uh, at any of the events later after the show. A couple of apple juices and I'll tell you whatever you want to know. You can find them at booth number <laughs> 700 if you're looking to take them up on that offer. Uh, so what, what drew you to oil painting specifically? Um, I'm not sure. What drew me to oil painting? Um, uh, I guess me, everyone- I'm I hate looking for a Bob Ross connection in some way. Um, I think it was just, Go ahead. Uh, what was the question? What drew you to oil painting? Right. Uh, everybody else, I was, I was actually work teaching uh, figure drawing at Scottsdale Artist School. There's a little bit of an echo. It's hard, it's hard to do. Uh, yeah. I was teaching figure drawing at Scottsdale Artist School, and um, everybody was oil painting. So I just thought, why don't I give this a shot? Uh, I wish I had a better story than that. That's, that's all I got. That's good enough. I think that's a good, that's a good answer. So you do a lot of Disney stuff. What's your favorite Disney movie? I mean, you're doing Beauty and the Beast. Is it safe to assume that it's Beauty and the Beast? 
Uh, my favorite movie or my favorite character? Movie. Movie. My favorite movie is uh, Beauty and the Beast. Yeah, actually. Yeah. Yeah. What did you think of the live action one? The the live action one? Yeah. I did, I didn't see it. But if Beauty and the Beast is your favorite movie, why some things you... some things in my head I can picture what they're going to be like, like skydiving and cliff jumping, and I just go, I don't need that. Not for you. Yeah, no, live action. Did Beauty and the Beast is an animated film, and that's it. How about <laughs> anyone else see the live action Beauty? So so, yeah. yay, nay. I liked it. I'm getting a lot of so so's out there. Okay, so you made the right call by not watching it. Good job. Yeah. Uh, so if Beauty and the Beast is your favorite Disney movie, is that safe to assume that Beauty and the Beast's favorite character is the pain? No, my, my favorite character is, is Peter Pan, because every shrink I've ever met told me I had his complex within five minutes of meeting me. So. That's understandable. To, won't grow up thing for those of you who didn't get that joke. Again. <laughs> Booth number 700. At the, in <laughs> yeah, that, go the, find it. For all the stuff that doesn't happen on the live stream, that's the place to find that stuff. Uh, let's see, I got a lot of things here. Oil painting, some of your favorite artists. Who inspires you? Who inspires me? Or comic artists, even. You know, I once read that Prince only listened to his own music, and I might be in that category, although I'm taller, not by much. Um, I love illustrators, turn of the century illustration, uh, J.C. Leindecker, Norman Rockwell. Um, not a huge fan of art, or of a quote unquote real artist. But I love old illustration. I'd rather look at like an old advertisement for Coke. I love all those guys. So this is, is going to be sort of a more loose version of a painting than you typically do. I, for anybody that hasn't stopped by his Artist Alley booth, number 700, you're going to hear me say that a lot, uh, you're going to see some work there that's a lot more refined. You know, we're rushing you, obviously. This is like a 45-minute painting. How long does it typically take a painting when you're not being rushed and asked questions by me? Uh, my typical painting takes about a week at 8 to 12 hours a day. So in a half an hour, I'd be lucky to be able to get a drawing done. Um, so well. I think we have uh, an image of some of your uh, finished work here up on the screen for anybody that can see that. It's a big, beautiful painting that's making me hungry, a painting of Doritos. Is, and I know there's a story behind this painting. Yeah, that, that, that's one of my favorite stories, actually. So um, my, my little brother, my little brother, is an, a 16th century French literary scholar with a double doctorate from Harvard and the Sorbonne. He knows a little bit about art. And so we were joking one day, and he said, I don't know what you're painting apples and eggshells for, if Rembrandt were alive today, he'd be painting Cheetos and Doritos, because that's what this country eats. As soon as he said it, we both went, you gotta do it. So I made a painting. I, I took a handful of Doritos, put them out on a table, and um, made a painting, made a little still life. Well, I was doing a show, and uh, a guy you may have heard of named Michael Rooker was there. And I was clowning around with him in the green room, and uh, he stops by my table, Asking me a couple of questions, mid-sentence he looks down and he says, did you paint Doritos? And I said, yeah. And he said, why? I told him the story and he said, I love it. I gotta have it. And he buys the painting. So I said, if, he asked me for a discount. Apparently Guardians doesn't pay that well. He needed a hundred bucks off. <laughs> so I give him the, di true story, I give him the discount. I said, if I'm giving you a discount, I want a selfie. So we take a selfie and I post the selfie of me, Michael, and the painting on my social media and about 15 of my friends liked it. And he posted the painting on his social media and about 50,000 of his friends liked it. So that's so it's it. sitting in his house right now? I think it's in his bathroom. In his bathroom? Which is just a weird place to eat Doritos. Well. I, I don't know, I mean, I'm looking at it and 
still, still doesn't scream bathroom to me, but that's, that's Michael, what can I tell you? Uh, let's take a look at some of this other work that we have. I think you sent us some slides. We've got a few other things to show everybody. Doritos, lovely Doritos. There it is. Everybody recognizes this. He's coming up later. David Tennant as the doctor. All right, there's some woos. I love some good woos. Uh, tell us about that one. The David Tennant? Yeah. So, um, one of the owners of this show, Stephen uh, Seamus, has commissioned me regularly to paint the guests. And so, um, I, what I do, I do a little portrait of the actors on the, on the comic book covers, and then he has the actor uh, sign the cover. And so, that, that, that's just one of eight I did for this show. And that was for this show? That's for this show, yeah. Oh, wow. That's so, great. so this was, you did this recently? Yeah, I just finished it. I've got some of the upstairs of the last, sh of the Chicago show. Um, the other Doctor Who guy. Oh, God, what's his name? Matt. Matt what? Smith. Matt yeah. Smith, thank you. I, I, I watch the show regularly, as they can all tell now. Who is in Chicago with us? Yeah, so you were at our Chicago show Oh, in it was October. a great show. Yeah. You had... Uh, I don't think we have your Matt Smith painting there, but what kind of stuff were you getting there? I know you do commissions, right, at your table? Absolutely Food do commissions. number Paintings 700. And so you paint, do commissions at your table, yeah? Say that again? You do commissions at the table? Yes. So what, what's something that's, uh, do you have a particular character that people ask you for a lot or something common? Do you see trends in the type of stuff that people ask you for? Um, Stitch is one of the most popular color, uh, characters anyone ever asked for. And um, how is your Stitch? Do you feel confident in your Stitch abilities? I, I can handle him. <laughs> I don't know what he is, but I can. He's an alien. But, but he's got to be based on something. He's like part rabbit, part mouse. Koala. I oh, koala. There's, there's some yeah. koala in there, maybe. That could be me. So it's a, you said that it takes you about a week or so to finish a painting? My paintings day? take, I've, I've, I've had paintings take me anywhere from six hours to a year. Six hours to a year. How long did the Doritos take? Uh, about four days. That's good. That's, that's bathroom material, four days worth of painting. What kind of what kind of setup do you have at home when you are painting? Do you paint standing like this? Do you listen to music? Do you have your um, own studio? I, yeah, I sit. I listen to Pandora mostly, but I listen to dead people. Uh, I like to listen to something that's quiet. I don't listen to anything. I, I don't like anyone yelling at me. Classical soundtracks, John Williams. Um, a little bit. Beauty and the Beast soundtrack. I don't listen to Disney music, no. No? No, I, I can't. I mean, once in a while. But, yeah. But for, for the most part. Th there's only about 500 songs. Well, there's about five or six movies that are worth the songs. But that's up to me. We're going to open this up to fan Q&As, too, by the way. Uh, over there, if anyone has any questions for Clinton while he's painting, we're going to uh, open that up. And you can feel free to just hop on there. And I will be like, hey, nice question. There you go. So talk us through what you've done. You sort of blocked it out a little bit in light blue, and now you're going in heavier. Like you're blocking it out. Talk us through the process of what you're doing. Um, what am I doing right now? Um, honest answer, I'm, I'm praying it doesn't stink in a room full of people. What's that? Oh, you, you didn't want me to be that honest. Um, I said I'm praying it doesn't stink in a room full of people. Um, I'm, yeah, I'm just, I'm basically just sketching, so this is exactly how I would do it if it was a painting. Where I would do a drawing first, let the drawing dry, and then fill it in with uh, paint. And how different of a process is this when you're doing it in this quicker one? Um, yeah, I would take my time. I would never stand like this and try to paint um, if I was in my studio. It's a little nerve-wracking so I sit and just drink tea listen to music and do we have some more of those images I wanted to get a few more looks at that other stuff that we had I'm talking oh. to the house to see if we oh, can okay. see some of those other images 
Okay, you were in Ace Comic Con Chicago, and this is Arizona now too. Have you been doing a lot of shows lately? Um, I won't be doing as many as I used to, but um, I do about five or s five or six, maybe seven a year. Um, I'm reducing the amount of shows I do to be m a little bit more exclusive, so I'm staying with maybe one or two uh, companies, I guess. Yeah. Um, and, and limiting it to that. So this one, I can't tell. Is this a sculpture? The the teacups. It looks like Alice in Wonderland. No, that's an actual. So I build sets. Okay. So if I can't if I can't find the objects, I'll build them. And so that's a tea set that I bought, um, and then I built the staircase. I built the door. Uh, the the drink me is uh, is Windex. I, I probably shouldn't have admitted that, but you know. Don't drink that. It's all right. Don't drink the drink me. It's Windex. Um, and so everything else, the pocket watch I purchase. Um, so I, I try to build as many things as possible. So you build the sets and then you do still lifes of the sets you build? Yes. The, so I light them to, I build them to get the, to get the lighting right. And it's much easier to get the lighting right if it's in front of you. Exhausted the six questions I wrote down there. What was my question? I said you've exhausted the six questions. You're on fire. You're burning through these guys. That's it. That you only had six questions. If anyone out there wants to throw me a lifeline and get up there on that mic, anybody else? I'm here to get your questions answered, or you can shout them out and I'll repeat them for them. It's all good. I'm here for you. No. Okay. What was the last Disney movie that you did see? The last Disney movie I did see. Last Disney movie I did see. Live action or animated? Doesn't matter. Your choice. Um, I guess Tangled. Tangled was probably the last one. I like Tangled. Did you do a lot of Tangled paintings? I did. I recreated the, tang the tower from Tangled. Oh, I think I saw that. That was another sculpture set that you built? Yep, I built the set. And how much time do you put into those when you're building those uh, sets? That took about a month to paint. And I built it in my driveway, and every time one of my neighbors asked me what I was working on, I gave them a different answer. So I told one neighbor it was a bird feeder, I told the other one it was a nightlight. That way I figured if they all get together and wonder what I'm doing, they'll all just think I'm insane. <laughs> so I keep people guessing. Yeah. That makes total sense. Total sense. Have you ever done any events at any of the Disney galleries? Yeah, I did, um, I did an event, a signing at the Weiland Gallery in Florida. I did um, one festival at the Masters. Uh, I did um, a, a food and wine at Epcot. Um, and so do you I, do yeah, a lot of... Do you do a lot of stuff outside of Disney? I know on your website I saw a lot of still lifes, um, portraits. I think I read that you've done a lot of uh, commission portraits for corporations and things like that. What kind of stuff do you I, do there? Yeah, I did. Um, I did a portrait for an executive at Bank of America. Um, I overcharged him. I was trying to get some of my money back. Um, <laughs> I'm kidding. If there are any executives for Bank of America, I won't overcharge you. I'm I, I'm I'm fine now. That's fine. They're I'm out there. Have to. They know. They don't have a strong legal team, do they? I'm going to get in trouble. No, you're good there. They're not here. They're not Disney. You're okay. Um, but yeah, I love doing. I love doing portraits. I do uh, any any portrait. Um, I've never done a pet portrait. So. Is that something that you're in the market to do? You're thinking about doing? I have a dog. Would make for a beautiful portrait. I'm not against it. I mean. It's not like my favorite thing to paint, but I'll paint anything, really. But I mean, beast, he, it's like Be part well, dog, I, I guess, part yeah, lion. As I'm technically working on a pet portrait. That's true. That's good, all right. So I guess I do do pet portraits. <laughs> and you typically work off 
of an example like that? I see your, your check-in reference on your phone, or do you ever do it from scratch? They didn't notice. They just Sorry. He was not just constantly texting people back and forth while he's on I'm, this thing. I'm he's just actually texting looking at the while, I'm, while I'm painting. I'm not really cheating off a photo of Beast on my phone yet. I don't uh, know if no. you noticed, but there's this really <laughs> oh, cool guy camera? behind me with a camera oh, yeah, pointing no, directly okay. pointing at, right you. at me. We can see everything here. Oh, boy. Uh, no, I don't generally work off my phone when I'm home. I have like either a laptop or I'll blow up a big photograph. Um, you try to work up from as large. This was really tiny to try to draw from. Yeah, and that's that's part of why you build those sets too when you're doing the still life. Yeah, because yeah. they're life size. Everything I paint is life size. And what size do you typically paint your portraits on? I know over at booth number seven hundred, your paintings you have hanging up there are about eleven by fourteen ish. So what size is that your typical size for a finished painting? My the size of my paintings depends. I, so whenever I do a still life or anything that's from a set, I paint it life size. So if the set is two feet by three feet, the painting is two feet by three feet. So the Doritos were life size? Yeah, life size. Just for reference, were those nacho cheese Doritos, blazing hot? What flavor were so we talking So I refuse to repeat myself. So every time someone asks me for a painting of Doritos, I paint a different flavor. So I started with nacho, then I did spicy nacho, then I did the blaze, which are disgusting, um, the uh, taco, which aren't bad, yeah. uh, and the wasabi, which are inedible. Uh, what do they even look like, wasabi? They're green. They look like the, I call them the Incredible Hulk Dorito paintings. Oh, I can't even. I love the, you know, speaking of Disney, the taco flavored Doritos. They have that old kind of Disney looking logo on their bag. Do you notice that? I didn't. Now I'm going to have to go look. And now, there's a, also a lot of uh, back in some trivia about Doritos as related to Disney. Do you know any of that? Because I got it for you. Yeah, the, the, that they were created at Disneyland? Yeah, they were yeah, invented I, at Disneyland. I think, did you tell me that yesterday? No, but oh, I okay. tell anyone that, that will listen, and uh, now I have a microphone in a gigantic building, so. I, I feel like someone's been telling me that already this weekend, but I don't know. Yeah, the, uh, the story was, the, it was like a Frito-Lay's cafe at Disneyland when it first opened, and no one would buy the taco shells, so they just smashed them up and put some seasoning on them, and then everyone bought that. And those are how Doritos were started. So if you notice on the taco flavored bag, the uh, logo looks a lot like the Disneyland logo. That's intentional because that's how they were created, the old school logo. And that you can take to the bank. I sent uh, Frito-Lay a message once, you know, just saying like, hey, I painted Doritos. And nobody's ever done that. And uh, they really didn't care. You know. I know a guy that, that works for Frito-Lay, actually. Put him in touch. It's always I good to will. know a guy. Brad Foster, if you're listening, which I know you are, you're in this building, Clinton needs to be put in touch with Frito-Lay. He's got you. I know. I think those, I know a guy. <laughs> those residuals are going to start flying in. Next panel we have, we're going to have uh, to call you a licensed Frito-Lay artist. There instead of go. a licensed Disney artist. Right, he needs to speak. Now I've been looking at you talking, and I haven't really, I keep looking over at this painting now. It's really coming along. How far along would you call this, as far as in your mind's eye? How far along this? The painting, like in, in your vision, how far along is this? That's good. This would be what I would consider drawing number two. So I would actually go in for a darker color and draw over this again and clean up all my lines so that they were Disney quality. We're not gonna have time for that today. But this would be my second of three draw. Usually I do, so if you notice I did a light one first, then I went over a little darker. I would go one step darker again, right. but we're just not gonna have time. I know I asked you to do this in a very short amount of time. Is the pressure, too, did I, did I, is it too much? I didn't want to put you out there because I think it's looking great. For me, if you put that in my hand, 
It was as far as pr- I mean, I'm not going to jump off the roof. <laughs> I mean, it's a, it's a little anxiety, a little performance anxiety. No, it's, it's looking great. I think everyone out Thanks, there can man. tell that uh, they're seeing it up there on the screen. It looks amazing. Um, you know, uh, this would be one of those situations where you, you have the cliched dream of, of, of being up here in your underwear. It's, it's, it's in that realm. You're, you have, you're fully clothed. No worries there. Well, thank you. No, we, we can tell by the lack of laughter. No, it's just my jokes. They don't really get where they should. Uh-oh, I just made a mistake. What's a mistake? Talk me through it. That little line doesn't belong there. I gotta get, I gotta get rid of that. That was the one line I thought that did belong there. Shows what I know. Uh oh. Now we're seeing a first. How do you, how do you erase paint off a canvas? With a bar napkin. Okay, that worked actually. It's like it never happened. So I think we're gonna be wrapping up pretty soon. And Uh I know we talked about giving this painting away too when you're all done. To one lucky fan out there. And again, uh, if anyone has any questions they want to ask Clinton while he's painting over there, the microphone's right over there. People will tell me, or you can raise your hand. If you don't want to get up and be on camera, I understand. Should we direct uh, him to my table? What? Should we tell him where I am? Yeah. I don't know if I mentioned this, but Clinton's in Artist Alley on the main quonk, quonk course. 700. Concourse. Right table number 700 right there. Yeah, table 700, but, but more accurately, look for 109. I'm under the 109 sign. And at his table, you will find portraits that he's done, originals that are hanging up there. Yep. Uh, you have prints available, correct? Uh, I have all, I have prints, yeah. And commissions, do you have do you do doing, commissions I, in over fact, the weekend? In fact, I have no commissions as of right now. So if you want a commission, um, I'm only going to be able to do about four or five more today. So first come, first serve basis. And I assume you have already done your Stephen Seamus work. Who did you paint this weekend? Uh, I did David Tennant, right? I did eight for the show. I did uh, Michael Fassbender. I did, oh God, I'm so bad with names. Um, the guest that we this have this is going to be embarrassing. This weekend? I, uh, I did the, the David Tennant, uh, Michael Fassbender, um, guy from the Kingsman, Cyclops. Storm? Storm, yes. Nailed Love it. the hair. Great hair. Um, totally. Who else is here? I can't remember any. I'm drawing Who blanks. else is here? Come on, everybody knows this. Well, obviously, he's here for Doctor Who. A lot of these people are here for Doctor Who. Kristen Ritter is here. Oh, yes, yes. I Charlie w- Cox is here. I met him in St. Louis last year. Very nice, nice man. Very nice man. I always uh, get thrown off when people have British accents, and I'm not used to hearing them like that. I don't know if anybody watched the Golden Globes, but Christian Bale is British. You forget that sometimes. But he was very British on the Golden Globes. Mm. I think we're gonna All right, are we out of time? a few minutes we're wrap this up this and uh, maybe get it out do, there to somebody, wanna, some lucky audience member. Do you have a question or do I have a question? Well, I was thinking maybe we could ask Here's a thought. We'll ask a question to the audience, someone down here, um, and then we'll have one of our awesome stage people here with a microphone. And the first hand we see goes up, and if they have the right answer, then uh, they'll get the painting. What do you think of that? Okay, so we just ask the question, the first person to raise their hand. Uh, well, we're gonna wait, I wanna get a signal here that we got a uh, microphone ready to go and then we'll do that. So you can keep painting until we're ready for that. So just tell me when to ask it. I will tell you when to ask. Think of a good question. I got a question. I, okay. I came prepared. Oh, very good. I love it.
Any, any other questions while I'm... Well, we're gonna get the, the question out to the audience pretty soon. Yeah, that's good. So I know I see a lot of comic artists, when they do sketches, they do it almost exactly how you're doing and with a blue pencil. Do you see, is it blue your typical color for, for blocking stuff out and doing quick stuff or is, why blue? Um, blue because it's not, it can be non-photo and you can go over it with um, pencil and clean it up. So you always, you always started a painting with blue? Yeah, one of the reasons I did this particular painting in the blue was so that it looked like one of my sketches. I don't normally paint in, in bright blue. It is looking really good. What kind of stuff do we have for, uh, at your artist aid table? I know I've seen some comic stuff too. You do, uh, there's some paintings of uh, Harley Quinn. Well, there, my comic stuff is actually cosplay paintings. So whenever I do like a Harley Quinn or a Batgirl, uh, rather than just copy something that's already been done, uh, we, I hire a model and we put her into, into the costume and that way it's, it, it looks and feels uh, more real, more authentic. And it's always working with a model or do you sometimes photo reference for those too? Uh, sometimes I'll take photos of my models if they're in a, a really difficult position. Um, something that I feel that, you know, they're not gonna be a hold, able to hold still long enough to replicate. But, um, I, you know, much like painting a portrait, uh, I like the face of the model to come through in the painting. How often do you do a painting of a model and they just turn around and see the finished product and just immediately want to buy it from you? Uh, how, how long does it take? How often do you, does the model see the finished product and love it so much that they just have to buy it from you? Um, a good amount of the time. I don't know the exact numbers, but I, I mean, I've actually had people at this point, even cosplayers, offer to model for me. Yeah. Uh, because they like the work. Um, and so, yeah, I seldom have to pay for models anymore. We'll either trade a piece of artwork or, um, you know, they just, they just want to see themselves in a painting, which, right. is, which is fun, especially if they have a great costume. I have a scarecrow Harley Quinn where the, it's a, fr a friend of mine at this point and she just wanted to be in a painting. And yeah. so I painted her. What are some of your favorite costumes or cosplayers to paint? Uh, I love cosplayers who make up their own, where it's not exactly strictly the, the, the uh, canon of the character, but like a variation. So if you mix uh, Harley Quinn with Alice in Wonderland or something like, what do they call that? They got a word for that now. Uh, I don't remember what it is. I just remember the yeah, amalgam DC that, Marvel stuff. Yeah. I always use that term, even though I know that's not correct. And the dinosaur. It's a mashup. That's it, that's the word. That's the one, Sorry. I knew it. My first show, at like three years ago, my first comic con, a girl comes up to me in the blue uh, with the white police, and I just look at her and I'm like, why are you dressed as a phone booth? And she looked at me like, how dare you be here and not know the answer to that question? So, I, and I do know, I Googled it now. It's, it's called a TARDIS. It's called a TARDIS, yeah. yeah it's there's it's actually a TARDIS, a TARDIS in the building. Yeah, Have you I seen it? it's upstairs, I saw yeah. that. If anybody looking at you, TARDIS up on the upper concourse, get a picture with a TARDIS. Um, in my own defense, when you work, when you do what I do, I literally paint for like 12 to 14 hours a day, every day of the week when I'm not in the show. All right, highlights in the eye. I think we're pretty much done here. Yeah? I think we can call this one finished. Well, not finished, but you know, as good as it's gonna get for a half an hour. I mean, you would know before I would. I would have called it finished a while ago, but I am not the artist. I don't ever wanna put constraints on you. 
You are your own artist. I'm an artist? That's what your description says. The I card was, says you're an artist. Don't make the cards a liar. My, my business cards don't say artist on them. They just have images. I always thought the word artist was like something that people gave you as a, like you're an artist. It was a compliment. So like to me, like putting artist on my business card would be like putting genius on my business card. <laughs> So I should get new business cards, is what you're saying? Because that's <laughs> what mine says. All right, I guess I better sign this, huh? That way, when I that way when I buy this thing back on from eBay in a week, <laughs> I'll I'll know it's mine. <laughs> yes, you know, you know it. It's a Clinton original. Beautiful. I love it. Yeah. Guys, let's give everybody uh, a round of applause for Clinton. I love it. So uh, exciting. Like I mentioned before, we're going to give this painting away. Uh, I think, not yet. Hold on to your question. I know you got one in the hopper. Uh, Clinton's going to ask everybody out here a question. We're going to have one of our uh, stage hands with a microphone. Um, and as soon as we see a hand go up, do you want me to call which hand I see, or do you want to call the one you see? Yeah, no, you, you call I'll it. I'll be that the judge. Okay, yeah. Yeah. So the first hand that I see go up, I'll send our stage hand over there. Uh, and if you know the right answer to the question, you're going to win this painting. This beautiful beast painting, original, done live here at Ace Comic Con, Arizona. Um, please don't yell out the answers to any of these questions, because we might need a second question. I don't know. I've got two clues for the question. Only if we need it. Only if, if we, we need, need the clues. Yeah, yeah, only if we need it. So, uh, let me know when you're ready. Are you ready for me to identify a person who answers this question correctly, or at least has their hand up? OK. Clinton, go for it. What is your question to the okay. fans here? Wait, well, let me, ask, let me ask them if they are you guys ready. She's ready. I hope you know the answer to this question. Uh, okay, Clinton, hit us. What's your question? Uh, which cast member, original cast member of the Broadway show Chicago, also voiced a Disney character? Don't. Know. Original oh. 1976 cast member of the Broadway show Chicago also voiced a Disney film character. I see on the stairs there, very excited person. Hold on, we got a mic coming up here. We're gonna make sure we have it right. Not yelling out the Watch question. Watch with my luck, there's more than one. <laughs> Hold on, I gotta get that going. Was it Jerry Orbach? It was Jerry Orbach. There you go, Jerry Orbach. Why don't you uh, make your way over here down to the stage real quick and we'll get you this painting. Great job, congratulations everybody. I thought that was a harder question. That was, a, I didn't know the answer to that one. I didn't mean I didn't know the answer to the other one either, so it's just how it goes. Awesome, great job. Welcome up to the stage. Congratulations. Let's give her a round of applause. What's your name? Kendra. Kendra, where are you from? Uh, le not cur currently here, but last from Austin, Texas. That's fine. You're Austin, Texas it is. Everybody in the house. Kendra, this is Clinton. He painted this beautiful painting for you. How'd you know the answer to the question? How'd you know that? I think I saw a photo of him from that and went, wait, he was playing the part Richard Gere later played? And I didn't quite believe it because I mostly knew him from Law and Order. Yeah, and, and in fact, I, to me, no one sings that song better than Jerry Orbach. Richard Gere wasn't even close. <laughs> All right, thank you so much, Clinton. That is a beautiful painting. Uh, we're gonna, do we need to let it Be dry? What's the deal here? Oh, well, it's not gonna be dry till tomorrow. Okay, well, so. be careful with that. It is wet. Congratulations, everybody. Let's give a round of applause. Thank you. Great job. 
So again, I just want to remind everybody, you can uh, check out Clinton's booth. It's number 700 on the main concourse. And uh, right up there. Right over there. Thanks again to everybody. And thank you, Clinton, for doing that for us. That thank you guys for having me. And thanks to Ace Comic Con for inviting me again. I always appreciate it. Always glad to have you. Thanks, everybody.